Would you join me? Is God good? Amen. Is Jesus wonderful? Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. If you need an announcement sheet, just raise your hand and our usher will give it to you. Okay. Well, lots going on. As you see, the, the sanctuary looks a little different than normal. I want to thank Darlene for helping me with all the preparations and figuring out how to do all this. I want to thank... Tim Spear and Lloyd Watts for helping decorate. Lloyd blew up 30 balloons. He yeah, has a lot of hot air. No. <laughs> actually, actually, I gave him a pump, so he, 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 he pumped them up. <laughs> didn't want to make him have to, to do all that with his lungs, but he did it. He didn't stop until they were all done. I appreciate it. So we got lots of balloons. Everything's looking good for, for VBS. We're excited about it. Just be believing God for, we want, we're believing for a total of 50 kids for the week, and, and, and we're believing God for a good turnout each day, and, and just excited about it, and ministering to the young people, and I got to thinking about it, um, we had a one-day VBS last year because it was our 40th anniversary, we didn't want to overdo it, and then the year before we didn't do it because of um, COVID, so it's been since 2019 that we had a full-fledged VBS, 
So, um, and this is four days, so it's a, it, it's, it's a lot for four days, but God will give us strength to do that. And I want to also mention, and I don't know if, if anyone that they would remember, um, there's a little lady from my church in McCook where I pastored. Her name was Sharon Foster. I know she went with the ladies to um, um, Raymond one time, but she, she went home to be with the Lord on Wednesday. She's the lady that James and I went to see um, right after Marcia's graduation in May. I, the Lord put my, my heart to go Wellika, Oklahoma, about an hour south of Tulsa. And I'm so glad that we got to see her and pray with her. I had a, in my heart when I saw her that I might not see her again in this, this, this world until heaven. And that came to pass. She's with Jesus now. So, and the family wants me to, to do a graveside service in August. So we'll be doing that. Got to, she's got a lot of kids. I've talked to three of them. So just be praying for her family. You know, and, but she's with Jesus. So that's the most important thing. So. And then also, something I, kind of, I mentioned it and I kind of forgot about it again. I'm going, Tim and I are both, Tim Spear and I are going to both be gone starting next Saturday, the 23rd. And we'll be, won't be back until that Friday, I think it's the 29th. Pastor Patsy is going to be ministering on Sunday morning next week, the 24th, and on Wednesday night. But if you need anything, you can still call me. You can call her if it's just a minor thing, but if it's something you need, I will be answering my phone. I appreciate that. And um, if we are going to go, see, I'm going to go see with my friend Kevin. We're going to go to Branson for one day, and I'm going to see Mary Hart Swift. If you remember less than Mary Hart, if you wanted to just draw, jot a little note, just some little, sp very, it doesn't have to be a lot, if you, but you need to give it to me before we leave next um, Saturday. So. If you can do that, we would appreciate it. I could give it to her. I'm sure she would appreciate that. She's in a nursing home in Hollister, Missouri, which is close to Branson. So we will be seeing her. So I just wanted to mention that one more time. If anybody wanted to do that, that would be great. Okay. Let's see here. Make sure you read this um, inside here. Um, Don Weiss got, um, there's some prophecies from Charles Capps and, um, the, his daughter Annette put them in a new book and put some um, commentary with them. I read them; they're powerful, and I put them on the radio even when I copied last night. Did my radio program for a couple of weeks, and then the la the, pa the other side of this handout sheet that I give out is a prophecy from Kathy Fleming, who has been here many times, and it was like very powerful. It's from 2016 about our church. I think it's good to read that. I think that will bless you. So look at those, and please, if you are helping with VBS in any way, please stay afterwards. Come up to one of the, the front three rows on either side, and we'll try to have a meeting just as quickly as possible today, but I've got the schedules and, and all the three pages of information. We'll go through it quickly, and just so we're all on the same page. So if we could do that, I'd really appreciate that, okay? And then we are tentatively still planning on um, baptism, but I guess we I mean, need to check for sure that the person wants to, to do it for sure. So if we, I'll, when I find out if we aren't going to have it, I'll let you know as soon as possible. But, so we're a little iffy on baptism. If we do have it, we're going to have a, a pot blessing, but we'll let you know for sure as I find out. All right? And then the, just remember, Byron August is coming, August 24th. I, we haven't done that for a long time. I had him do that in Superior or in McCook. I always said, Byron August is coming in August. And he has been here many times. He is an instructor at Rama. He is the, in charge of the Re Nanowski Recreation Center. Um, been a good friend for many, many years. Been there so faithful. So you will be blessed by his ministry Sunday morning and Sunday evening on the 7th, or excuse me, on the 24th of August. And then Kindle the Flames coming up, ladies. So we'll be getting more information out to you for that, too. That's coming, you have to be thinking about that. And then um, as we give, we just, we're thanking you. If you just give, we're gonna have a boys and girls contest, okay? And if you want to do it today, I'll let you do it. Um, where it says missions, if you write boys or girls, you can, we're, we're starting today. Whichever group has the most, um, money at the end of the week of Thursday, 
the boys or the girls will, if the girls win, then myself and one of the bo young men that are um, helping with the VBS from Christian Evangelism Fellowship have to have something done to them. And if the, if the, bo if the girls lose, then Kathy Weist, and then we're going to pick a girl. We have to get a girl that's willing to do it too. And we're doing it totally different this year. We're going to have a, our spinning wheel that we have, and we have four different things that possibly could happen. We could get um, toilet paper wrapped up in toilet paper. We could have a, what we call pie in the eye, where you th throw whipped cream, a pie in your, in, a, in your face. We have one where this is a new one we've never done in all my years. And I found this on the internet. Brush your teeth with ketchup. And Kathy likes ketchup, she said, so it's okay with her. So, <laughs> <laughs> so watch us brush our teeth with ketchup. And then there was a fourth one. What is the fourth one? Thank you. That was Lois's idea. Silly string, which we've done that before, but haven't done it for a while. So I got four cans of silly string, so I never like to overdo it, you know. But <laughs> <laughs> so if you'll just have, you're welcome to come. If you want to come Wednesday night, if you know, normally come to church and, and you want to come and sit in the back, you can. If you want to come Thursday night, that's the family day, and we're going to have a meal at, at, at 8.30 after all the festivities are done. <laughs> we're going to have hot dogs, and homemade nachos, and the real stuff, um, Arlett's cheese sauce that's homemade from Velveeta. It's really good. And then um, watermelon, good old Jim Beard's watermelon. Yes, Pastor. Oh, yes. I'll never forget that as long as I live. And I think, if I remember right, the girls lost, which usually the, bo the boys always lose because people want me to, to have to do it. But that year, the boys lost, or the girls lost. So you had to kiss the armadillo, but I was being a sport, so I kissed it too. And I, th <laughs> I think we scared that poor thing so much. It tried to run away from us. It was so scared. <laughs> and we didn't kiss it on the lips. We kissed it on the side. <laughs> <laughs> yes, James? I think we should have to do all of what you said this year. All four of them? No, I don't think so. <laughs> now, you would love that, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, yeah, let's see. For $1,000, let's see. <laughs> we'll see here. <laughs> No, I did not think about having to do all four of them. Oh, my gosh. I don't know about that. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, what? <laughs> oh, you guys, I don't think so. Anyway, we're going to have a lot of fun. So come, come and join us, especially Thursday or Wednesday or Thursday, because it's just going to be a great time. And we're giving away that night. We're giving away prizes every night, and we're giving away an Android tablet. It's a kid's Android on tablet. And so somebody's going to get that at the end. It's going to be really cool, too. So lots of stuff going on. It's really neat. Okay, well, let's go around and greet everybody and tell them Jesus loves you, and so do I. <laughs>
just uh, want to give you the opportunity to give this morning. Amen. And uh, amen. So it's. There we go. <laughs> All right. Amen. Well, we just encourage you this morning for giving. Just uh, fill out the lines or your name and all that happy stuff. You know how to, you guys all know how to do that by now, so that's all good. So just encourage you in the giving above and giving the offering here. Um, EBS is the project for the month, and it's a great thing to give towards. Amen. Looks like it's going to be a good time. And uh, we'll... Make all that work, amen? All right, well, I got a scripture for you this morning. Proverbs 11, it's 24 and 25 in the NLV. And the first line, the first part of it here says, There is one who is free in giving. question this morning I have for you, are you free in giving? Are you able to give freely? That's an interesting, as I, I sit and I, I think about that, are you able to give freely? That doesn't mean so under compulsion or somebody forcing you, are you able to, free, are you able to freely give without being like, well, I can't do that, I can't do that because I got this to take care of or that's to take care of, so I can't give. But the scripture says there is one who is free in giving, and yet he grows richer. And there is one who keeps what he should give, but he ends up needing more. The man who gives much will have much, and he who helps others will be helped himself. It's kind of a, if you can absorb that, meditate on it, think on that, that's kind of a freeing scripture right there to me. It helps you free up. Because... You know, I d the way the you know the way some some things go. You know, people are asking for money right now. The political thing is just chaotic. I mean, you 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 get a response on your phone. Oh, we should give towards this. You know, we need to help this, and they're going to impeach whoever, whatever. So we need to give money towards that and this and that. You ever just put in stop and then realize that that was a mistake because then they got your number and then they give you about 10 more, 10 times as many things. Like, oh, he's a live one. Let's get him, you know. He must be, yeah. Anyway, so uh, but God is looking, God is doing, God says that in the scriptures. To do that is to free us up so we're not bound up. Be freed up because that's who he is. He's always giving, right? Amen. So I just encourage you with that. Meditate on that. Proverbs eleven twenty four. Meditate on that. Think about that. Get that down in your heart. Amen. I just encourage you with that. So let's just pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are continuously watching over us. You're continually helping us. You're continually giving us wisdom. You're continuously speaking to our spirit to help us to be and come all that we need to become. Lord, help us to be free in giving because it, it's your heart. It's your motive. It's your plan to help people and encourage people to, to come to that place where they can just free in every area of their life. We just thank you for that because you're watching over us and you're helping us. You're able to uh, give us everything that we need. We just thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's do our confession. Amen. I didn't give offering. I'm leaving you, Lord, for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits and promotion, estates and inheritances, interests and income, rebates and returns, Discounts and dividends, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises. What's wrong? <laughs> Greater odds. Thank you, Lord, for being all my needs. I have more than enough to give, to promote the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.
must have never known my God. Some may say it's over, but it was finished on the cross. Some may say it's broken, but the healer's in this room. Some may say it's hopeless, but I know God's about to move.
praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. We just worship you, Jesus. Just tell Jesus how much you love him. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we praise you. Jesus, we bless you today. Oh, God. Oh, God, you're so good. Tell him how good he is, how good you are, God. You're so good to me. You're so good to me. I worship you, Lord. I praise you. I bless you. I honor you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're such a good God. You're such a good God. Oh, we love you. Oh, we bless you. Oh, we worship you. Jesus, we praise you. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we worship you today. We thank you, Lord. You're a good God. You're a good God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Well, what came to me while we were worshiping here? <laughs> This is good news. Amen. This is good news. Right. This is not just good news. This is great news. That's right. And you know, you turn on the TV and you hear bad news. <laughs> yeah. I don't care what channel you turn on with news, even if it's the conservative news, you hear bad news. And I, in, in, in my spirit, sometimes I just like, I don't want to hear any more of this. I want to know what's going on so I can pray. But I don't want to just listen, 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 and get down, 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 down. I'm not going to do that. But the Lord just said this morning, good news, we know it already, but we need to be reminded of the good news about a good God who does good things for his people. You study his word, you find out he's not a bad God. He's not mad at you. He loves you. Jesus loves you. And Jesus is with you. And Jesus is taking care of you. And he will take care of you. And we don't have to be worried. We don't have to be stressed. And, and, and Wednesday night, people said, there, this little saying came to me, didn't even think about it. I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm not going to be stressed because I am blessed. You know, I always said, I'm too blessed to be depressed. Well, I'm too blessed to be stressed too. You need to say that a few times, maybe a dozen times or more, to get it down into your heart. And don't go around just trying to make it, just, just sluggish, just like, oh, this world's gotten so bad. This world, we had, a hur we had an earthquake today. Did anyone feel it? Yeah. Signs of the times. I felt it in my house. It's like, wow. I thought it was an old, you know, I thought it sounded like an old sonic boom when I was a kid. You know, that's what it sounded like to me. I was like, what is it? I went outside and I, or not going to go outside, but went to my living room, my big picture window. I was like, did something happen? And I found out it was an earthquake. Well, the Bible talks about that. It's a sign of the times. Jesus is coming back. Good news. Good news. We have good news. Hallelujah. We need to be excited about the good news that we have to tell other people. You know, we... If people look at you and they think, if they got good news, they sure don't act like it. If they got good news, they sure don't look like it. We need to let our smiles come out. We need the joy of the Lord. And when we worship God, that's what we need to do, is worship Him from our hearts, completely and totally, because we have the victory. Jesus has already won. We know it. We don't have to try. We, Jesus has already won, and we just live out the victory. We, as Alana, Alana was here, Pastor Francis' granddaughter, we don't have to fight the devil. 
we just stand in our victory that we already have. We stand in the victory that God's already given us. And I'm standing, and I'm singing, and I'm dancing while I'm standing, okay? I'm going to do that. Sometimes you got to just dance. Sometimes you got to just cry. It's, you can cry for joy. I cry for joy a lot. Those who know me know I cry. I cry a lot, because, not because I'm sad, but because I'm so happy, and I don't know what else to do, so I just start crying, okay? I, that's how, and I don't care. I'm a man. I don't care. I'm a man's man, too. I don't care. <laughs> because a real man is someone that can admit to their, to their flaws, but also that's not a flaw. I can release my emotions, and that's what God's given us. And we can worship Him and be thankful to Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. I just have that from my heart today. You may be seated. Praise God. God is so good. Amen. Amen. <laughs> well, why don't you get your Bibles out, and we will do our confession with our Bibles. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's just lift our Bibles up. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I thank you for the privilege of ministering today. And as we talk about the Holy Ghost, as we talk about tongues, as we talk about being spirit-filled, we thank you, Holy Ghost, that you are here. Thank you for your presence. Thank you that we receive all that you have for us today. Thank you for the anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage. <coughs> Excuse me. We thank you, Lord, for ministering to our needs. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for the joy that we have. Thank you for the good news of the gospel that we can give to everyone that we see and that we are reflecting that joy. Thank you, Lord, for the good news that we'll give to these kids this week, that they'll just be filled with joy, filled with the good news of Jesus, how much he loves them, how much he's there for them. We thank you for it. Touch their families too, Father. Thank you, Lord, that all the parents and the relatives that come, Father, we thank you for it. Touch their hearts. Thank you for your very presence. Thank you for just the spirit of love to permeate this place this whole week. We thank you for it, and we give you the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, we got to have a few jokes, you know, of course. So, <laughs> now, is he ready for me already? <laughs> of course. Well, you know, I have a problem. I don't have my jokes. They're not here. <laughs> the joke is on me. <laughs> you will enjoy. He's going to enjoy it today. I don't. I don't have them in my notes. <laughs> Guess what? I don't know what I did. I put, I put them down here, and they're not in here. Aren't you? Aren't you happy? <laughs> did I put them? I'm looking if I put them in the wrong place, but I don't. I don't see them anywhere. I absolutely don't see my jokes. Are you going to just cry today? <laughs> the joke is on me, I guess. <laughs> And my problem is I don't remember them very well either. That's, that's, that's the problem. Oh, let me think of one. Can I think of one? <laughs> oh, gosh. I don't. I don't know what happened. But, but you're going to just love that. You're, you don't have to worry about it today. <laughs> if it comes back to me, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe I'll tell you when it comes to me in the middle of the message. But I wonder what I did. I copy and pasted them, but I, they're not here. 
That is weird. That's Glenn sabotaged my paper. <laughs> I blame it on Glenn. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> that is so funny. That's hilarious. I, just, I cannot think of any, I can't think of a single one now for some reason. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to go on. <laughs> you, have, you enjoyed that. You got a good laugh anyway, right? You got. <laughs> oh, boy. But we're going to talk about the Holy Ghost in me. And you know, when you are born again and you accept Christ as your Savior, the Holy Ghost is in you. But, and that's great, and there's a lot of controversy about this, so I realize that people have heard a lot of different things, they believe a lot of different things. Well, I want to show you what, what I see in the Bible, what we teach here at Living Faith Fellowship Church. But we believe in being filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, and, and the joy of the Lord is part of that too, and we can live in His joy. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. We've been talking about the different aspects of the Holy Ghost. We talked about that in this first scripture. Let's look at for, uh, John 14, 16 through 17. John 14, 16 through 17. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby, to be with you forever, the spirit of truth whom the world could not receive and take to its heart, but it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he, the Holy Spirit, remains with you continually and will be in you. So we've talked about how the Holy Spirit is a helper, and, and he's, he's another helper. He's allos of the same but different. And that's what the Holy Ghost is the same like Jesus, but he but he's here too now. And, and then we have the help, he's our helper, he's our comforter, he's our advocate, he's our intercessor, he's our counselor, he's our strengthener, he's our standby. We learned last week that you know you get triple strength. Have you ever heard if you watched um, commercials about double strength? Well we get the strength of the Father with the strength of, the, of Jesus and the strength of the Holy Ghost. Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, Philippians 4.13. And then we learned about um, how he's our strengthener. The Holy Ghost is our strengthener. He's our standby. He'll stand by you, and if you need him, he's there for you. Right, isn't that great that he's standing right by you, helping you all the time? He, he'll do his part, but, but you have to do your part. Some people think God will do everything for them. That's why they're mistaken, and they're wrong, and they don't receive because, well, God's going to do it all. No, God does his part and you do your part. Faith, you have to, to walk in faith. You have to do your part. Your part is to do what you know in the natural and, and to walk in faith. And God will bless that. So we're going to, to this, there's a little mini book. Called, and if anyone wants one of these, let me know. We've, we've got some. It's by Reverend Kenneth E. Hagan. And it's Why Tongues? And there's 10 reasons why we should speak in tongues. So I'm going to talk about the first two today. And so we'll look at quite a few scriptures here about that too. Mark 16, 17. Mark 16, 17. It says, These signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. So this is part of the Great Commission, and, and these signs are supposed to follow those who believe. And that you're going to be able, if you need to, if demons need to be cast out, that will happen. My friend Kevin, who has gone to Pakistan, and his um, partner, Brother Anand, who's over there, they see this happen a lot. They, they, they actually have cast demons out, and they have left in the name of Jesus. But then also the Bible promises that we will speak with new tongues. The Apostle Paul wrote much about speaking in tongues. And he practiced what he preached too. Look at 1 Corinthians 14, 18. 1 Corinthians 14, 18. And I want to just say this too because a lot of people get it mixed up. 1 Corinthians 12 talks about the gifts of the Spirit. There's nine spiritual gifts. 
And one of them is the gift of speaking in tongues or the, the message of tongues. And if you, and I've operated in that, you've seen me do that. You've seen Pastor Patsy do that and, and several of us. And you, God gives you a message to speak out to the congregation in tongue. Well, what has to happen after that? Interpretation. interpretation. You have to have an interpretation of the tongue. And God, it's like God giving you prophecy. He's talking, kind of like what I spoke from my heart today, but it, it, maybe a little even more direct way. And he'll give that to you. And there needs to be interpretation. Now, what I call, what we're talking about is your personal prayer language. I used to teach the children, and I'd call it my, PP, my PPL. I made it easy for them. Personal prayer language. Speaking speak in tongues. And, and also, um, some children's ministers like Mark Harper call it like a secret mystery code that, that only God knows. The devil can't hear it or can't understand it. And he doesn't. But it's us speaking to God. And when we pray for other people, we are praying and we're interceding in the spirit for other people. And that's the beauty of being able to speak in tongues. Because there's situations in your life you don't know how to pray in English. And you can pray in tongues. And the God is making intercession. The Holy Ghost is making intercession through you. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 14, 18, Paul says, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than any of you. Or the King James says, more than ye all. Did you know that he was from the South, y'all? <laughs> he, but he says, I speak in tongues more than all of you. And he spoke in tongues a lot. He talked about it a lot, too. So we're going to explore the blessings for every believer through the appropriating the power of the Holy Spirit daily. And that's another thing I want you to be aware of, is that the Holy Ghost is with you all the time. And what do you do if you, have, if you lose something or you need wisdom in the middle of something, stop and ask him. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. And I've given you lots of, lots of examples lately of things that, you know, we need the Holy Ghost to find, like Jackson Neal, who shared last week at camp. He lost his Bible and his notebook. And he was so excited about taking all his notes for camp. We got 20 miles away, and we realized he didn't ha have it, so we turned back and went back to the camp Looked several places, couldn't find it. I, and I said, Holy Spirit, you know where that's at. I thank you that you will reveal it to him or reveal it to whoever. And, you know, it wasn't three minutes later that a, a girl came out and where he had had his the last meeting and he had left it in the back. And here it was. I said, we're not leaving until we find it. We found it. I mean, you, you can stand that way and, and, and believe God and he'll help you to do those things. So be aware of the Holy Ghost. Be aware of him helping you. He's your helper. If you have a helper and you don't use your helper, what good is it? That's what everyone's telling me. Delegate, delegate. So I try to use people, have people help me, ask for help. Well, we need to ask the Holy Ghost for help, too. I can do it myself. I can do it. I think of Miss Daisy. I can do it myself. <laughs> she always tells Hope that I can take myself. But she got... Pretty soon she started getting used to Hoke, and then he's kind of handy, she said. I just love that movie. I talk about, and she kind of got used to Hoke, and then she wanted him, well, that's the way with the Holy Ghost. You don't go around, I can help myself. No, Holy Ghost, I need your help. I need you. Ask him for it, and the more you get used to that, he's going to be your helper. He's going to be your good friend. My good friend is the Holy Ghost. He's my friend because he helps me. I talk to him. You know, you can, talk to, you can talk to the Father. You can talk to the Son. You can talk to the Holy Ghost. Now, when we have what I call prayer of faith, then you need to go to the Father in the name of Jesus. But I talk to the Holy Ghost, ask him these things, and he, he's there for you. Look at Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Reason number one, tongues is the initial sign. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Acts 2, 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So those that were gathered today on the, the day of Pentecost, they were all filled, not some of them, all of them that were there. And the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. You open your mouth and the Holy Ghost gives you the utterance. You don't have to come up, think of what to say, but you do have to open your mouth to be able to say it. Tongues is the initial evidence 
or sign of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is supernatural, yet we speak it with our natural tongues and mouths. God doesn't give you a separate tongue and a separate mouth. This natural mouth speaks it out, and he gives you the utterance of what to say. Acts chapter 10, verses 44 to 48. Acts 10, 44 to 48. And you know, I want to say this too, that some people are backing down from speaking in tongues. Some ministers are backing down from talking about it. In fact, someone told me that one denomination who's well known for being spirit-filled and Pentecostal are forbidding their people to, pray, to speak in tongues in church. Can you believe that? I'm not mentioning any names, but this is what he told me. So that, that not all of them. There's just certain ones of this denomination are saying that you can't speak in tongues in our church. We don't want to make people uncomfortable. Well, I don't want anyone uncomfortable either, and I don't want to be flaky, and I want to be goofy, okay? God wants things to be done decently and in order, but I want the Holy Ghost. And I don't want to substitute um, brass for gold either. And that's, that's what happened when with these kings, they get invaded, and then they take all the gold out, out of the temple, and then they put brass in place of it. I don't want brass for gold. Brother Hagin would talk about that. I want the real thing, the Holy Ghost. I want the move of God. I want the power of God. I want all that God has for us. That's why I'm talking about this. That's why we need to be excited about it. God is doing a work. There is an end time revival. We are part of it. It's happening here. It's going to be. Look at that. Read those prophecies. They'll tell you that it's happening. And, and I believe it. I, I, I'm, I'm experiencing it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Acts chapter 10, verses 44 to 48. Even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the, of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles too, for they heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. Then Peter asked, Can anyone object to their being baptized now that they have received the Holy, Ghost, Holy Spirit just as we did? So he gave orders for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Afterwards, Cornelius asked him to stay with them for several days. So here they were, not only the Jews, but also the Gentiles were filled with the Holy Ghost. It's for everybody. It's for all believers. And it's an initial sign that you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Now we talk about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Sometimes people get confused. So I want to talk for a little bit about the three kinds of baptisms that the Bible talks about. Did you know there's three kinds of baptism? I didn't know that until I you know, started coming to church here and started going to I think even after I was at Ramah, I maybe didn't know that, that there's three different kinds of baptism. So let's look at number one. This is the one that you're most familiar with. It's water baptism. We know about water baptism. <coughs> and we believe in our church we have baptism by immersion, and we wait till the, ch till the person, a child. We baptize many children, but we wait till they're old enough to understand what it means to be born again, and we have them tell us we ask them before they're baptized, Are you, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And so they understand we don't baptize babies. We dedicate babies. And I've done that, and, and um, we pray over them, and the church prays over them, and the, and the, the parents agree to raise them um, in, in a godly atmosphere, bring them up in, in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, and the, and the congregation also promises that too. It's similar in, in, in as to infant baptism, except that it's not baptism. Because a, a, a baby can't decide, can't accept Christ as their Savior. But when they're alive to God, but when they reach the age of accountability, they have to make their own choice. So that's why we have the water baptism. It doesn't save you, we realize that, but it's a symbolism of an experience that happened on the inside of you. In other words, baptism in water is a way to to form, to exteriorize the experience of being born again. It's an outward sign of an inward experience. And some of you who are old enough to remember this, because this is kind of old now, a Kodak moment, ever hear? This is a Kodak moment. And there was a youth minister on the radio, he used to call it the spiritual Kodak moment. So that's where I kind of adopted that. I said, baptism is a spiritual Kodak moment when you, you're reminded of being born again. And you tell the world, this is what happened to me. So that's why I'm being baptized in water. I'm going down into the water, and I'm coming out of it 
and that's representing that I, my sins are buried, my sins are gone, and I've become a new creature in Christ, and I've been born again. Amen. And I'm coming out of the grave as I'm coming out of the water. And that's what it's, it's a beautiful experience. Being water baptized is a beautiful thing. Matthew 3, 13 through 16. Matthew 3, 13 through 16. We baptized like, what, nine or ten young people last year? It was wonderful. We had a great baptism. It says, Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried to talk him out of it. I'm the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, It should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were open, and he saw the, excuse me, the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. So here even Jesus was baptized. And I'm looking forward to going to the Jordan River in January. I'm going to Israel after three years of, of trying to get there. And I'm planning on being baptized in the Jordan River. It's going to be a wonderful experience. Amen. So baptism, water baptism is a beautiful thing. The second thing is the greatest thing is baptism into the body of Christ. That you are baptized into Christ. And you're in the family of God. And that's not a water baptism. That's a spiritual baptism. This happens in the same moment when we are born again. At the moment we confess Jesus as Lord, the Holy Spirit comes upon us and makes us a new creature. And we're inserted into the body of Christ. We become members of the body of Christ. Amen? Some people ask about, do we have membership in our church? We don't have what we call formal membership where you have to take classes. If you start coming to this church, Living Faith Fellowship Church, on a faithful basis, you're a member. That's how it's been. And, and we've talked about maybe doing a formal membership, but it just didn't, it just hasn't gelled. So I th this is what we've, this is the way Pastor Patsy did it, and I feel good about it. And you're, you're part of our church. Just be a part of our church when you start coming, be faithful. Well, I thought about that kind of as the same as you know, you're a member of the body of Christ. You're baptized. You're a, you know, we're all members of the same family. I don't care whether we're Baptist, Nazarene, um, Pentecostal, Assembly of God, Methodist. I don't care. We're all members of the same family. We're just have extended family. Some of you got second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth cousin. I don't know if I have, you know, we're all part of the same family. Every one of us. And we can have, as long as we believe in Jesus as our common denominator, that we're born again, and we believe in the salvation message, we can fellowship on those, those means, those bases. If we, miss, if we disagree with other stuff, just don't be disagreeable. Just love them and fellowship with them. Amen. And we can do things together. And we need to be working together. Amen? Right. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm excited about the Keith Becker Foundation, or Todd Becker Foundation, Keith Becker, coming here, 2024. And so we appreciate that. Well, now, that you know what? I'm going to let, there you go. My phone is ringing, and I forgot to turn it off. No, actually, I, this, this was done on purpose. Don is, at, is calling me. Let's see if what, what Don needs. Hi, Don. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. I didn't even I wasn't even aware of I did that, but that's good. Thank you. That was all right. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> I told I say praise the Lord a lot, I think. But I wanted him to call me because the initial sign that I had a phone call was when my phone rang, right? So the initial sign that you speak are filled with the spirit is when you speak in tongues. So it's kind of a this is my little illustration to you is when my phone rang, now I'm going to silence it, okay, so I won't do any more, <laughs> get myself in trouble. But that was the initial evidence that I had a phone call, is that it rang, okay? So the initial evidence that you are filled with the Holy Ghost is when you speak in tongues. Amen. So, praise, praise God. Look at 1 Corinthians 12, 13. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. We're still being, talking about being baptized into the body of Christ, and then we'll go into the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
Some of us are Jews and others are Gentiles. Some of us are slaves and others are free. But God's Spirit baptized each of us and made us part of the, the body of Christ. Now we each drink from that same Spirit. Think about that. You drink from the well of living water, of the Spirit of God. And you know, this summer I have drank a lot of water, but for some reason I've been really, I've been drinking a lot of lemonade too. <laughs> it just refreshes me. It just, I just enjoy it. So how about the Spirit of God? He should be so refreshing to you. To be in the presence of the, of the, of the Lord, to be in the presence of the Holy Ghost, to drink of the new living water. That, that flows on the inside, the anointing of God. You should hunger and thirst for that. You should thirst for that in your, in your heart. Just like, uh, I want an ice cold glass of lemonade. I just can't wait to get that. Well, we should you know, much more want the Spirit of God, the refreshing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then the third thing, the third baptism is the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 5. Acts 1, 4 through 5. It says, once when he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, John baptized with water, but in just a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so the, the, here's the promise of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then Acts 2.4, Acts 2.4, we talked about this earlier. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. So that's, that was for everyone. And that's how we know that you're filled with the Spirit is when you speak in tongues. You're the overflow is the speaking in tongues. Everyone who's born again, you have a portion of the Holy Ghost. You have the Holy Ghost. But when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you're overflowing. Filled, bubbling over, filled to overflowing. And that's so important that we keep being filled we can get empty. That's why I know that I'm going next week to camp meeting, and I realize I need to go. <laughs> I, I, I give out, give out, and give out, and there's times when I need to be filled back. And I'm also, you know, wanting to rest a little bit too, just take it easy, and, and then but go to some of the services. And I love the, the songs, David Ingalls. I can't wait he's going to minister on Monday night, and then the Rainbow Singers and Band are going to minister on Thursday night. I'm going to fill up. <laughs> I'm going to get filled up with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to, and I always, that's what I call Raymond when I go. I say, I'm going to the filling station. I'm going to, I'm going to get filled up because some of us are driving around on empty, and it's not a good thing to do. You know, it's harder on your um, fuel pump, too, when you drive with your car really low on gas. That's what I was told. So you should f be overflowing. As in the, in the, so we, as Christians, shouldn't be running on E all the time. We should be filled up. So that's why I know I need to go. <laughs> it's time for me to get filled up. Amen. Number two, reason two for speaking in tongues is tongues is for spiritual edification. Spiritual edification. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 4b. You, know, you don't use the term I'm edified, but it really means just build you up, build you up, charge you up. You understand that? I get charged up. 1 Corinthians 14, 4b, He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. He builds himself up. Paul encouraged the church at Corinth to speak with other tongues as a mean of spiritual edification. Edification means to build up. Charge up our spiritual batteries. Well, you can understand that. Most of you have a phone, and it's got a charger on it. And if you don't charge it up, what's going to happen? It's going to be dead. You can't use it. That's not a good thing. And I'm one of these who's adamant to always have it charged. If I get under 60%, I was like, I gotta get charged, I gotta get charged. I like it charged up, I don't like it low. I've gotten it pretty low before, but I don't like that. Well, that's how we are spiritually, we don't wanna get low. And there's another illustration I think is a good one. How many of you have ever had a dead battery and you've had to get use your jumper cables? These are kind of a twisted mess, so I obviously haven't used them for a while. <laughs> but I have had to use these before a number of times. But it's kind of nice this day and age, too, that they have one of those chargers 
It's like a portable charger. It's a, well, a battery pack, and it's got cables on it, and they can bring it over, and they can just put it on your battery, and they, it can get you charged up and get you going. I think Harold had to do that for Tim not too long ago. And I've had several places where I've had to have people jump start me. You know, sometimes we have to help other people because we're, we're getting low, we're kind of sad. When someone else is filled with the Holy Ghost, it drips over on them. You splash the water on them a little bit. Come on, get filled with the Holy Ghost. We gotta help, help to encourage people to get excited about Jesus. We don't wanna lose our excitement, people. There's, there's, pe there's, there's Christians who are not excited about Jesus. They're just doing the same old, same old, or they're just looking at the world. Oh, this world is so bad, oh, it's so horrible. Oh. No, we don't need to be that way. It's not necessary. We can be full of joy, full of the Holy Ghost. Be excited, excited about Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming soon. Every day, I don't know when he's coming, but I know that every day is a day closer. Right. And I've gotten a lot more days closer than I had before. So I'm excited. I just think about how wonderful it is. And, and the reunions that we'll get to see, people that we haven't seen in so many years, I was so cute the other night. Little Goldie um, Bush now was at her. Her mom was at the at the Family Dollar, and she was there. And I'm inviting her to VBS, you know. And then she's asking me all these questions. Well, where's your mom? Where's your dad? And I said, Well, mom died about forty some years ago. Forty years ago. And I said, My dad died forty five years ago. Whatever. Really? I said, Yeah. My, they've been gone a long time. They've been with Jesus all that time. Really? I said, but I'm going to see him again. I get to see, you do? I said, yes, because they're with Jesus. So it was just cute. She was asking these questions, but I was like, yes, I am going to see them. I have that promise. I get excited. And we need to be excited. And we need to get other people excited about what Jesus is doing for us and what we have waiting for us. Oh, it's awesome. Wonderful. 1 Corinthians 14.2. 1 Corinthians 14.2. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. So we're speaking divine mysteries. Uh, James Moffat's translation says he speaks divine secrets. You're speaking divine secrets to God when you're praying in tongues. God has given us a divine supernatural means of communication with him. It's like, and, and also like this too, I learned this from Pastor Patsy. She's talking about getting your uh, pipes unclogged, your spiritual pipes unclogged. If you use liquid plumber, but there's even better stuff than liquid plumber, right? There's stuff that, you know, get all the gunk, they take all that out of there. It's, it's ugh, ooky, yucky. It, but it'll get, get through that. Because you, like you don't like a plugged up drain, do you? No, oh, yay, I got a plugged up drain, yay. I'm so excited about my plugged up drain. It's just so handy now. No, that, no one gets excited about a plugged up drain. Well, the world is trying to plug you up. Did you know that? The world is trying to stop you from speaking. The world's trying to get you out of your love walk. The world's trying to get you to be sad, cranky, um, kooky. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. The world's the, the devil, the world is trying to stop you from being a testimony. And you have to keep yourself unclogged with all the gunk and junk from the world. And I have to admit, Dennis had to come over, he's gone today, but he had to come over and, and take my pipes apart and get the gunk out of my pipe because the liquid plumber just didn't do it. And he showed me the gunk that he got out of there. It was like, oh. Yuck, that's gross. But thank God, when we pray in the Spirit, we pray in tongues and we communicate with God, we're getting rid of all that gunk and junk that the devil tries to, to hinder us with. It's out and we're cleaned up and we're able to work. And I sure like, I like having my drain in my bathtub when I'm done, not still filled up and having to wait for it to go down, or my sink when I'm, when I'm shaving or doing something and it's not draining through. So that's what you need. You need to have, be filled up with the Holy Ghost 
So there's no gunk and junk in your life. And, you're just, and there's not a bunch of stuff that keeps you from, from um, being with God and spending time with him like you're supposed to. Amen. 1 Corinthians 14.14. 14. 1 Corinthians 14.14. 14. I'm going to use two versions. The first one is the easy-to-read version. If I pray in a different language, my spirit is praying, but my, my mind does nothing. So you don't think about it. You don't have to think about praying in tongues. You just do it. 1 Corinthians 14, 14, the Amplified Classic Edition says, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit, by the Holy Spirit within me, prays, but my mind is unproductive. It bears no fruit and helps nobody. So you don't need your mind for that. Sometimes you've got to unhook your mind. That's how you can hear from the Holy Ghost, too. It's funny how what I hear from him the most is when I'm doing th jobs or things that I'm not having to think about. I'm mowing my yard, or I'm shaving, or I'm cleaning, or I'm just doing something, and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost just like, dropped down into my spirit. And he says something to me. He, I hear it, and I listen to it. I hear, hear his voice. Always be open. Always be tuned in to the Holy Ghost. And when we are praying in tongues, our spirit is in direct contact with God. And then we've used, and this, one more time we'll use this scripture, Mark 16, 17. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Amen. So today I just want to encourage you. If you have been filled with the Holy Ghost, the evidence of speaking in tongues, and you haven't prayed for a while, you need to do that. Every day you need to pray in tongues. Every day stir yourself up. And if you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost, I don't want to force anyone to do it, but I would love to see you, you know, be filled with the Holy Ghost, and you would experience the beauty, the joy of, of knowing God intimately in that way. It's wonderful. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost for over 41 years. I'll be, you'll be 42 years in August that I've been born again, and I think I got filled with the Spirit maybe three or four months later, something like that. So it's been a long time, and I've enjoyed it and, and fellowshipping with God, and He is so good. So let's, let's just pray, and then we're going to pray in the Spirit for just a little bit after that. So Father, we just thank you today for everyone, that you love them, you care for them, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are here. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for all that you want to do in us. And Lord, if there's any of us that have been clogged up, pi pipes are clogged up, we just haven't felt like praising God. We haven't felt like worshiping God like we had done in the past. Help us to unclog that today. Help us to just be filled with your presence today. Experience your goodness and your help. And we're going to do that in just a minute. If there's anybody that's watching today by um, Facebook Live or anybody in, this, in this, this service today, and you're not born again, if you haven't accepted Christ as your Savior, if you don't know where you go, you need to do that. You need to make sure that you are saved. And John 3, 3 says that you must be born again. And Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes in righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. So if you haven't done that, pray this prayer with me today. Just believe this in your heart, and I'll have the congregation pray with us too. Let's just say this together. Dear Lord, Dear Lord I, believe I believe that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ died on the cross, died on the cross and, rose and rose from the dead. Come into my heart, Jesus, and, and be my Lord work on and my Savior. Thank you for forgiving me and for cleansing me from all sin. Jesus, you're my Lord, my Savior, and my best friend, and I'll serve you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, make sure you get yourself into a Bible-believing church. And we have services here on Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We love to have you be a part of it. And so now we're going to just close our eyes for a little bit. Just get into the presence of God here. 
and, we're, and, we're, and I don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable. If you don't pray in tongues, it's just, just pray a quiet prayer to God. But we're just going to pray in the Spirit for just a few minutes, just, just unto the Lord today. Oh, Father, ki la pata o le sinamba de godoshe, dalla de bisile de kosso de vanaste, nebre biando le baho de caleantas, nesh de la maso de bramande, nesh de calatos de la monte, de lambo de ronde gisile, nash de la sonaba, iste de la macande, no prohoshilande, sala capadiasto, nash de colamanse, ebre bihesote, nasitamba onde anche, Casi de Bilempo on the Branta, Gisti Cabasuri Manale, Gisha de la Marsena de Bonole, Yanda de Sicadova la Madigasto, Yesa de Bonola Bacchida, Nebra Boho Shikamanse, Nebra Botasone, Nalanti Behendo, Rodi Asani, Badola Canale, Nebra Bohosada Vateke, No Bita Bastila Mondoshe, Yesa de Macora Bahasicate, Nebra Boho Sidabalane, Nesha Kadamo Sinamba, Nisa de Botile, Nasande, Nasande Kalapa Onde, Rabia Sitidamba, Nebra Hosi Kadani, Nisha Kadanda Sabalande, Ro Katia Sinama, Nama Sikamande, Hale de Bosti Kalananda, O Brapasi Hande, O Brapasi Hande, Nebra Boti Kasadane, Nebra Boti Siandavante, Nebra Hotu Kasane, No Kabahasti and the Kila Master of all Shikali, Say the Bantu of the Pony, Nisa Hambaho de Kali, Nisha Pomoti Vibiso, Kibrando Sonoma Kani de Kasandi, Cobra Bay Sandi, Ha Ha Ha. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Sebastian Kosan, May the Boshikata for Sing, Oh, Kibati Anta for Sing, Kilapati Samosa Kantaba. For the Spirit would say unto you, I long to be with you. I long to fellowship with you. I long to have you in my presence. I long to be with you, to, to sup with you, to commune with you. I long to be with you. How I love you. How I want to be with you. How I want to spend time with you. So spend time with me. Be in my presence. Make a decision to be in my presence. Make a decision to step out of the world and step into my presence. And you will see my glory. You will see what I have for you. You will see what has been prepared for you from ages. You will see. You will see my glory. You will see what I have for you. Be in my presence, saith the Lord. And that's just what I had the Lord put that in my heart to speak that out today just to be in his presence he wants you to to know that to hear that to fellowship with him at all times he loves you so much jesus loves you so much thank you lord hallelujah thank you lord glory to god is there anybody before we go today no pressure is there anybody if you want to be filled with the holy ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues raise your hand and i'll pray with you is there anybody who wants to do that today? Thank you, Jesus. Well, praise God, I won't push, but I believe that there's people who would like to be. You come see me. Come talk to me, and I would be glad to pray with you. And, you know, I got prayed for three different times at the full gospel business meetings, and I didn't get filled with the first two times. I was like, oh. But I didn't. I was 13 years old, didn't quite understand it all. But I remember that third time, I got one word, and I just thought, i got to say that word. i got to keep saying that word. I came home that night, laid on my bed, and I opened my mouth up, and it was the greatest experience I had ever had to that point. It was like a river gushing, and I opened my mouth up, and oh, I just prayed fluently in the Spirit. And it was such a peace, such a joy, such an understanding. It was so awesome as this young boy just enjoying God and experiencing the presence of the Lord. You know, I, I really experienced God. I didn't have a, a lot of friends. I didn't have any spirit-filled friends until I came to church here when I was 18, when I was in um, senior in high school, and I found the youth group, and they were young people my age or a little younger that loved God, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They spoke in tongues, and they weren't ashamed of it. And I was like, praise God, there's other people just like me. Before that, I thought I was the only weirdo around, but I loved it, and it blessed me. So just be open to that, 
in what God has for you. And, be more, and those of you that pray in tongues, just be more open to be spiritually minded, to, to, to pray in tongues, to, to ask God to speak to him all throughout the day. Don't just wait till a certain time of the day. Talk to him all the time. That's a, that's a wonderful thing. Well, praise the Lord. All right, let's get the prayer sheet out here. Do we have any prayer requests today? Anybody? Yes, Lloyd. And you want safety and protection to go to go there and come back? Okay. Going with your brother Rodney. All right. Sounds like a fun time. I know you've been looking forward to it. Anybody else? Yes, Katie. Your iron level? I'm going to come back because that fan I can't hear. What's that? Okay. What is his name? Bob. Bob. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Both legs? Okay. Anybody else? Yes, Janice. How's your brother doing? Praise God. Amen. We prayed for him. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Yes, Kathy. Is Mr. Everhart, you said he, he came home from the hospital? And, he, and he's walking, just com completely recovery you want? Yeah. Anybody else? Yes, Lois. Wow. Did we put her on? Yeah, we, oh, we got her up here, yeah. Good. Anybody else? Okay. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, according to Matthew 18, 19, the prayer of agreement, we're touching these situations. And we just thank you, Father, we agree for, with Terry Smith that she would completely come out of that, Father, and, and will have no paralysis, no loss of, of anything, Father, in, in her body. Every organ, every tissue of her body functions the perfection which you created to function. We just thank you for total and complete recovery. We thank you for that, Father. And we thank you for Lloyd and Rodney and the rest of his friends and family that are going 
um, to Nebraska City. We plead the blood of Jesus over them. We claim Psalm 91 and just keep them safe and protected at all times and all places. And their pathway is life and there's no death and not hit anything and nothing will hit them. Just thank you to have a good time there in the class, in the, the class reunion and enjoying seeing people they haven't seen for a long time and it's and it's safety and traveling and, and good weather for them while they're there. We thank you for it. We thank you for Katie. We thank you that her iron level will be where it needs to be and will stay there. We just thank you for it. Every organ, every tissue of her body functions to the perfection which you created to function. We lift up um, her mom's husband's blood pressure, Bob, and we just thank you it will go down. It'll be where it needs to be, Father. We thank you for touching him. Every organ, every tissue of his body functions the perfection which you created to function. We lift up Chuck Bridwell, and we just thank you that infection in his leg has to be gone. In the name of Jesus, he's the heal of the Lord. Every organ, every tissue of his body functions in perfection which you created to function. We thank you for it. We thank you for Jim Richards. And we just thank you, Lord, um, that stroke symptoms are gone in the name of jesus he is healed and whole from the top of his head to the soles of his feet we thank you for it and we just thank you for mr everhart we thank you lord that he's able to walk he's getting better every day his, his strength is returning he's completely recovered we just thank you for it for all that you're doing in jesus name and we just continue to thank you we've, we've already prayed for linda rupa we thank you that dizziness is gone she's the healed of the lord she's totally totally well and she will be able to help this week for VBS and she's agreeing with us on that that she, she's able to do that and we thank you for it Father for all that you're doing and we do thank you for a successful VBS and, and, and just bless each person that is making the, the trip that has to travel the, to come here bless them Father you provide the, the gas you provide everything that they need Father you are so great and we just thank you for blessing each person that's involved Thank you for this meeting that we're going to have, and we thank you for, for everything that needs to be said and done, and thank you for your anointing on it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you all. Have a great afternoon. And then those of you that are helping with VBS, I'm going to start it right now, try to get you out fairly good time, and let's just come up to the first three rows on either side, and let's just do it right now get it done. We love you all. God bless you. Have a great week. Um, no grub and grow on Tuesday. Wednesday night, no church, but if you want to come to VBS, you can. Thursday night is the family night. We love you all. God bless you. Otherwise, I'll see you in a couple weeks because I won't be back until, you know, preaching until um, August. So we will see you. God bless. <laughs>